New Xiaoyo yogurt claims to be made from pasture-raised cows, but it contains dozens of carcinogens. This so-called high-quality yogurt is a milk drink that children love, but in fact, it contains no milk. There seems to be nothing wrong with this yogurt, but if we take a look at its nutrition, it will send shivers down your spine. There is zero nutrition. Look at the ingredients list and your jaw will drop. There are 21 ingredients in total, and none of them are related to milk. Among them, only water and sugar are not harmful to the body, and the other 19 substances are all harmful. Ranked third is non-dairy creamer, which is also known as trans fatty acid. Once this substance enters our body, it is difficult to metabolize. Its metabolic cycle is as long as 50 days, and it can also cause obesity. It's an inflammatory, and long-term consumption can cause blood clots. Ranked fourth is fructose, a substance that has long been banned by the World Health Organization. Then there are 16 kinds of additives, such as flavoring agents, thickeners, preservatives, and sweeteners. Among them, there are as many as five kinds of sweeteners, especially aspartame, which has long been designated by the World Health Organization as a carcinogen. And the last one is food flavoring. If children drink this for a long time, it will seriously lead to obesity, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and even cancer. Zhao Lin, a health education expert at China's health ministry, once exposed a large starch factory in Hezhe. Zhao Lin witnessed a machine in the factory spraying a yellowish powdered vegetable fat used in coffee creamer containing hydrogenated oil and premixed flavorings. It turns out that these additives were purchased by the largest dairy factory in Inner Mongolia, aiming to increase the viscosity of milk. Zhao is concerned that due to the huge demand for milk, many dairy factories add additives to enhance its taste. A blogger showcased how to make a bottle of milk in 30 seconds without using a drop of milk. In the first step, we put in a small spoonful of titanium dioxide. Don't put too much. Too much will make it very white. Then let's shake it to see if the color turns milky. Now it's not as thick as milk. Don't worry, the next step will be more powerful. Sodium carboxymethylcellulose. This is a thickener which will make it cling to the side of the glass. Also add a spoonful, but don't add too much. If you add too much, it will be too thick. Let's shake it again. Now it feels closer to milk, but still a little milky. Next comes the highlight, milk flavor. I almost fainted when I smelled this. We just need to add a few drops. Don't add too much, it will be too strong. Now this bottle of milk is ready. Mangnil Deluxe milk went bad before the expiration date. The largest dairy manufacturer in China produces this kind of milk. After my son took a sip, he said, Dad, this milk doesn't feel right, it tastes funny. But he had already swallowed some. I opened the bottle and found that the milk was full of lumps. Yesterday and the day before, my son had allergic rashes all over his body. In recent years, there has been a craze for high calcium milk. This is achieved by artificially enhancing the calcium content of milk to increase its nutritional value. However, from the ingredient list, it is evident that milk is supplemented with milk minerals. Milk minerals are easily absorbed by adults but are not suitable for infants and young children as their digestive systems are not yet fully developed. Here's an expose about milk supplied to students. The water is mixed with raw milk or milk powder and then monoglycerol and diglycerol fatty acid esters, sugar, and food flavors are added. Mono and diglycerol fatty acid esters are emulsifiers, which are made of hydrogenated oil glycerin. Why not give our next generation pure milk? The unscrupulous milk factory has taken advantage of parent psychology. They mix water, sugar, and additives into the milk, and then added the words school milk to the packaging, and orders exploded. If you want to reduce costs, just remove the milk, and use only vanillin. Just use a small spoonful and the whole bucket of boiled water will have a milky flavor. If you want a smoother taste, add mono and diglycerol fatty acids and some calcium carbonate to make it a special high calcium milk for the elderly. Do you think I'm talking about unlicensed products? No, it has a production number, it has a production license, and the procedures are complete. Many people buy milk to supplement nutrition and calcium. But in the end, they'll find it a waste of money. Some consumers have always believed that the thicker the milk, the better. But this is not the case. Recently, some bloggers have exposed many problems with several large manufacturers in China. 
The first one is Yili Zhenong milk. Did you see the anhydrous cream in the ingredients list? It's the source of the milky fragrance. Add mono and diglycerol fatty acid esters, emulsifiers, and gelin gum to make the milk thicker. This product, Meng Niu Future Star Children's Growth Milk, contains apple juice so that it's not too sweet, with some polydextrose to enhance it. Fortunately, it is considered a kind of dietary fiber, but you can't eat too much. In order to make the drink thicker, emulsifiers and edible gum must be added. In order to prevent gum precipitation, sodium hexametaphosphate is added. In order to prevent oxidation, antioxidants must also be added. Mangnil breakfast milk will not be thick enough when water is added, so two emulsifiers, one water retaining agent, and three edible gums are added. Adding white sugar alone is definitely not sweet enough, and walnut is the main flavoring agent. Furthermore, experts have cautioned that excessive consumption of milk may lead to hormonal imbalance issues. Imagine under what circumstances cows produce milk. It's when they have calves. But cows are not always calving, so most of the milk we drink is induced through hormonal stimulation. Nowadays, many school children have been found to have excessive antibiotic levels in their bodies, raising concerns about the quality of milk. Additionally, the various additives in milk may have adverse effects on cardiovascular and cerebrovascular health. Moreover, consumers should be wary of deceptive business practices. Labels like flavored and fortified indicate processed milk. Many milk beverages labeled as milk actually have the word "beverage" in much smaller print. In reality, these milk beverages are just low-cost drinks and have no actual dairy content. However, these milk beverages are sold at a higher price in schools because businesses must participate in bidding to sell milk at schools. Although the cost of milk is low, the bidding cost is high, resulting in high prices for school milk. The Chinese dairy market wasn't always this chaotic. Before 2000, there was no nationally recognized brand in Chinese dairy because only pasteurized milk could be produced. Pasteurized milk has a shelf life of just a few days and requires refrigeration. This limited its sales scope and hindered scalability. Therefore, most dairy products companies were regional at that time. However, 1997 marked a turning point. Tetra Pak, a Swedish packaging company, reached a significant agreement with Yili, a leading Chinese dairy company. This agreement led to the creation of the Tetra Pak packaging for shelf-stable milk, which we are familiar with today. In 2000, Tetra Pak collaborated with the emerging Meng Niu, further solidifying its position in the shelf-stable milk packaging business. Subsequently, the Chinese authorities stipulated that packaging for pasteurized milk could no longer use terms like fresh milk, but should only use standard terms like sterilized milk and pasteurized milk. Consequently, pasteurized milk labeled as fresh and nutritious had to be renamed. Local dairy companies competing with Meng Niu and Yili almost collapsed. It wasn't until January 1, 2008, that the fresh milk ban was lifted, allowing pasteurized milk to be called fresh milk again. However, pasteurized milk had already lost much of its market share. Pasteurized milk and flavored milk, marketed as pure milk and breakfast milk, respectively, dominated the liquid milk market. At that time, Meng Niu faced a severe shortage of high-quality milk sources and had to purchase low-quality milk from farmers for processing. Moreover, China's level of dairy cattle farming lagged significantly behind, lacking high-quality dairy cattle breeds. The shortage of milk sources met with enormous demand. Vicious competition persisted, and major dairy companies sacrificed quality for profit. To compete in the market, major dairy companies resorted to adding various chemicals to milk as an unspoken rule. If the fat content was insufficient, they added fat powder. If bacterial levels exceeded limits, antibiotics were added. If it wasn't thick enough, whey powder was added. If it was too acidic, alkaline substances were added to neutralize it. If protein was lacking, melamine was added to cover it up. However, even with these additives, the shelf life of milk could only be extended to six or seven hours. Hence, hydrogen peroxide was always kept on milk delivery trucks for quick addition before inspection. In the following years, China's dairy industry became corrupt through and through, from production to sales. The ultimate victims were Chinese infants and young children. In 2008, the melamine milk powder incident finally erupted, with San Lu Group becoming the target of public outrage, and melamine became almost a nightmare for a generation. 
However, in 2010, Meng Niu and Yi Li claimed that due to the melamine incident, they would no longer add industrial ingredients to milk. Consequently, they couldn't improve the quality of their milk sources and milk processing techniques, thus lowering inspection standards. As a result, the standards were reduced to the world's lowest levels. The protein content decreased from the old national standard of not less than 2.95 grams per 100 grams to 2.8 grams per 100 grams. Bacterial colonies were not to exceed 2 million CFU per milliliter. Compared to the United States and the European Union, China's standards were notably inferior. The U.S. requires a milk protein content of not less than 3.1 grams per 100 grams and a total bacteria count not exceeding 300,000 CFU per milliliter. The EU's requirements are even higher, with a protein content of not less than 3.3 grams per 100 grams and a total bacteria count not exceeding 100,000 CFU per milliliter. China's milk protein content has always been significantly lower than the world standard because most of China's dairy farmers are smallholders, with inconsistent standards and extremely low-quality dairy cattle breeds, coupled with backward farming techniques. However, China's total bacterial count limit differs from Western standards by 1.9 million. No technology can completely kill bacteria. The more bacteria in raw milk, the more bacteria remain in the final product. While most bacteria in milk do not directly affect the human body, if a cow contracts Staphylococcus aureus leading to mastitis, the bacterial count in the milk it produces increases. In this case, this batch of milk should not enter production, but due to lowered standards, it does. This batch of raw milk undergoes pasteurization, reducing the bacterial count to acceptable levels, and then is sold to consumers. Toxins produced by Staphylococcus before pasteurization remain active. If consumed, it can potentially cause acute gastroenteritis. This is just one example. There could be many other types of bacteria lurking in milk with various consequences. Some issues may not immediately manifest, but long-term consumption could pose serious health risks. The dark side of milk factories goes beyond this. In 2012, a junior student majoring in food safety at a university in Xi'an disclosed the appalling conditions at an Inner Mongolia ice cream factory owned by Meng Niu. He went to the factory as an intern. Because photography was strictly prohibited inside the factory, he could only sneak a few photos. He pointed out that the factory suffered severe environmental pollution, with piles of garbage and a foul smell outside the dormitories, accompanied by flies. He also observed sewage overflow and substandard product quality. This intern was assigned to do manual labor, such as moving boxes, while quality inspections were conducted by students from Inner Mongolia Finance and Economics College, which seemed to be a college or vocational school. Moreover, the factory adopted a sampling inspection method, where if one product was found to be substandard, the entire batch would be deemed unfit. According to their understanding, routine inspection items included coliform bacteria and total bacterial count. When asked about the percentage of products found to be substandard, the answer was approximately around 10%. However, specific details regarding the number of samples taken per batch and the handling of substandard products were not clearly provided. Despite conducting inspections, substandard products were not further processed upon discovery, but were shipped directly. Ice cream consumers may inadvertently ingest waste material from being improperly packaged, dropped on the floor, or reworked due to machine malfunctions. His paper prompted an official statement from Meng Niu acknowledging environmental management violations and announcing that the factory had been ordered to rectify issues and that relevant personnel were suspended. However, shortly afterward, the article and related reposts were deleted, indicating Meng Niu's powerful sway with the authorities. Shortly thereafter, another major Chinese dairy manufacturer, Yi Li, was exposed for significant issues. The Chinese Quality Inspection Bureau notified that certain categories of Yi Li milk powder had exceeded mercury levels. This incident stemmed from a woman in Hong Kong City, Shanxi Province, who had to terminate her pregnancy at seven months due to long-term consumption of this mercury-laden milk product. Following this event, the Central Propaganda Department told local media outlets that they could only use Xinhua News Agency's dispatches about the story, forbidding any independent reporting. Song Kun Gang, chairman of the China Dairy Industry Association, declared that such unfortunate incidents were extremely rare, and China's infant formula milk powder standards were among the strictest in the world. He also emphasized that even his grandson drank domestic milk.
However, investigations found that the mercury milk was not recalled or destroyed, but silently made its way into the bellies of Chinese infants and young children. To prevent inferior dairy products from harming the public, Western countries have enacted various standards for dairy products. For example, milk product standards in the United States are jointly developed by the United States Department of Agriculture (USDA) and the Food and Drug Administration (FDA). In Canada, they are developed by the Canadian Food Inspection Agency (CFIA). Although different countries have different government departments responsible for setting standards, the content is largely similar. All country standards require testing for milk protein, fat content, and various bacterial counts. Many standards require strict testing, with governments regularly examining cows. The testing system can be said to be quite comprehensive. However, China's dairy industry faces many problems. Firstly, over 70% of China's raw milk comes from individual smallholder farms whose dairy cattle farming techniques cannot meet international standards. There is a gap between China's dairy cattle breeds and those in the West. The Holstein cow, the most popular dairy cattle breed in the world, has been bred by the United States for nearly a century. After China introduced this breed in the 1970s, it crossbred with local yellow cattle to produce a Chinese hybrid. However, compared to the Holstein, the Chinese version produces nearly half as much milk. What's crucial is that after artificial breeding, species will quickly mutate or degenerate without continuous genetic improvement and maintenance. Therefore, countries with developed dairy industries have breeding centers containing a full set of biological information to ensure continuous breeding. For example, every cow in the United States has its own identification card to ensure that the next generation remains high quality. Chinese cows are not tracked like this. Small farms purchase cows with a sole focus on milk production without considering breeding, leading to the rapid degeneration of cattle breeds. This not only results in decreased milk production but also affects quality. These issues directly impact the quality and safety of milk. Another reason China's dairy industry cannot meet international standards is the quality of water sources. Over 90% of milk is composed of water. Cows require a large amount of water daily. Therefore, the cleanliness of water sources and cows' hydration directly affect the quality of milk. Taking Canada as an example. Drinking water on dairy farms is tested twice a year to ensure that microbial and heavy metal levels meet strict standards. In winter time, cows must drink warm water to facilitate lactation. However, in China, many dairy farms are located in northern regions such as Inner Mongolia, Xinjiang, and Hebei, where water is already scarce. Many farms give their cows human domestic water or even recycled domestic water. In winter, cows can only drink cold water. Combined with unsanitary conditions, cows are prone to illness during the lactation period. Once they get sick, they're given antibiotics, bacterial counts, and heavy metal levels would all be elevated. A third reason is improper feeding. According to an investigation by Radio Free Asia, cows raised on small and medium-sized farms in western China generally suffer from nutritional imbalances. Without a proper feeding plan and balanced feed, the health and milk production capacity of cows are affected. Would you dare to drink such Chinese milk?